candidates first of all before you start your exams make sure you pray because the bible says that you seek ye unto the kingdom of god first and every other thing shall be added unto you unto you so first of all we have 144x cubed y squared and 81xy raised to power 4 so we are going to find the gcd of 144 and 81 so first get the gcd of 81 and 144 so here we are going to use prime factors we will get a number that can go into both 81 and 144 without a remainder so the least number let's try taking two if we take two two can go into 81 yes but there will be a remainder but 2 can go into 144 without a remainder. But because there's a remainder here, we go to the next number, which is 3. 3 can go to both 81 and 144 without a remainder. So we have 3. So 3 can go into 81. 3 can go into 8 2 times, which is 6, which is uh, 6, remainder 2, into 21, 7 times. Then 3 can go into 14, 4 times which is 12, remainder 2, into 24, 8 times. Then again we try 2. 2 goes into 27, yes, 13 times, remainder 1, but goes into 48, 24 times. But there is a remainder, so we go again to 3. 3 goes into, 20, 3 goes into 27, 9 times. 3 goes into 48, once, into 18, 6 times. So it goes there 16 times. Can 2 go into 9 without a remainder? Yes, it can go into 9, but there will be a remainder. Can 3 go into 9? Yes, it can go. Can it go into 16 without a remainder? There will be a remainder. It will, be, it will go there 5 times remainder 1. Can 4 go here? There will be a remainder. So we leave it at that. So the GCD... Because of these two numbers, already there is no number that can go into both without a remainder. So we leave it at that. So the greatest common divisor of 81 and 14 is 3 times 3, which is 9. That's done there. Then remember we have x cubed y squared and xy raised to power 4. So we have x y raised to power 4 and we have x cubed y squared so we want to get the letters these are letters we have x and y and we have x and y so we want to look for a letter that can go into both x y raised to power 4 and x cubed y squared without a remainder so because x y is common to both so our first letters are x and y x goes into x once without a remainder y goes into y raised to power 4 it goes there y raised to power 3 times then x goes into x cubed x squared times then x goes into y squared y times here, which letter can go into both without a remainder? We see that y is common to both, but x is not common to both. So we take y. So y goes into y cubed or y raised to power 3, y squared, y raised to power 2 times. Then y goes into y once, and then we have x squared. Therefore, any letter that can go into these two again without a remainder, there is no, no, no other letter. So the GCD of y of, of, of x y raised to power 4 and x cubed y squared is x y this times, that dot means times y. This comes to x y times y is y squared by the laws of indices if you have common letters or common numbers you just write that number then you add the powers so this means that y raised to power 1 times y raised to power 1 which is y 
then 1 plus 1 is 2, which is y squared, or y times y is y squared. So, the GCD of 144x cubed y squared and 81xy raised to the power 4 is 9 times xy squared. Now, this comes to 9. I need uh, another felt pen. xy squared. So that is the GCD. So the next question, there's a part B of that question, which tells you, question 1, B, which tells you, hence factorize completely this expression, the expression of 144x cubed y squared minus 81xy raised to the power 4. So you are told to factorize this completely. But from A, we found that the GCD, which is a common factor, greatest common, common, is 9xy squared. So just come here and write 9xy squared. When you factor it out, you say 9 goes into 144 how many times? 144 divided by 9. 9 here once, 9 here once, remainder 5 into 54, 6 times. So it goes 16 times. Then x goes into x cubed, x squared times. Then y squared goes into y squared once. So it remains like that, minus. 9 goes into 81, 9 times. x goes into x once. Then y squared goes into y raised to the power 4, y squared. So from here, you can see something not funny, but very familiar in this bracket. You see 16xy squared. 16 can also be written as 4x, but they have a common squared. Minus 3y squared. So, I want to explain this again. 16x squared can also be written as 4x everything squared. So 4 squared is 16, x squared is x squared. 9y squared can also be written as 9, as 3y, everything squared. So when you look at this, we remember something called a difference of two squares. So by a difference of two squares, here we have 9xy squared, just drop it down, 9xy squared, into a difference of two squares, tells you that when you are given... A, a, a challenge like this, then it means that it is 4x minus 3y into 4x plus 3y. When you expand this, you get this. But this is further simplification. It's called a difference of two squares. So from here, use difference of Two squares. From first by now, <laughs> you know this. Or rather, you should know that. Now, that is question 1b. Then we go to question 1c. So we've already factorized. That is to factorize. Means simplify further. Then question 1c. The LCM of three numbers... Class, this, this one I think I can bet that it is going to come. Such a question, even that question 1, is going to come. Question 1a. The LCM of three numbers, LCM of three numbers is equal to 7,920. And their GCD equals to 12. Two of the numbers are two numbers... R, one is 48, the other one is 264. Using factor notation, find the third number. Find the third number. We want the third number. Find the third number if one of its factors is 9. If you are given such a 
question first of all just smile because it's so easy these are easy marks so anytime you are given such a challenge that the gcd of a number is given lcm is given you are given two of the numbers they want a third number just say the third number equals to the gcd times lcm over lcm of the two numbers gcd times lcm over the lcm of the two numbers so we have the two numbers get their lcm so lcm of 48 and 264 the least common multiple start with 2 2 year 24 2 year 132 then 2 2 year 12 2 year 66 then 2 2 year 6 2 year 33 then 2 2 year 3 then you bring down 33 then 3 3 year 1 3 year 11 then 11 1 1 remember i told you when you're finding lcm they want the least common multiple so you you ensure that whatever you get here is 1 and 1 so this is the lcm therefore lcm of 48 and 264 equals to 2 raised to power 1 2 3 4 times 3 times 11 okay 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 this is uh, 4 times 4 this is 16 times 3 times 11 so once you get this come back here say the gcd our gcd is 12 times our lcm is 7000 920 divide by our LCM of the two numbers which is 16 times 3 times 11 so let's divide 11 let's 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 start with 11 11 goes here once 11 goes into 79 7 times which is 77 remainder 2 into 22 2 times then 0 then we go to 3 3 goes here once, 3 goes here twice, which is 6 into 12, remainder 1 into 12, 4 times, then 0. Then let's go to 4. 4 here, 4 times. 4 here, 60. Then let's go to 4 again. 4 here once, 4 here, 15. So we remain with 12 times 15. This is 180. very easy now class you can be told you will there, there's there's a sum that you can also be given the gcd and the lcm and then you're only given one number in case you are given one number then the formula remains the same but it is gcd times lcm over one of the number over the number given over the number given or over the lcm of the number given not two numbers now if you are given two numbers, it is LCM of these two numbers. But if you are given only one number, it is the LCM of that number. Or that number. So I think that's very precise and accurate. Question number two. So as form four, I'll, I'll try to move a little with a little speed so that at least we, we save some time. So question number two, simplify. Remember, you are told to simplify completely. 2 into x squared minus 36 divided by 2x squared minus 7x minus 30 divided by x minus 4 over 2x plus 5. So in this, look at this. I want you to solve them separately. So solve whatever you are given in the first column here. So we have x squared minus 36. There's something unique about this. Remember, I told you something to do with the difference of two squares. So x squared minus 36 is the same as x squared minus 6 squared. So solve whatever is at the numerator here. We have 2 into x squared minus 6 squared. This can also be written as 2 into 
x squared minus 6 squared is the same as x minus 6 into x plus 6. A difference of difference of 2 squares. So, we've solved this part up. The numerator comes to the denominator. Denominator here is 2x squared minus 7x minus 30. This is what we call quadratic equation. So, in the quadratic equation, look at two numbers. When you multiply them, gives you 2 times 30, which is 60. When you multiply them, gives you 60. When you get their difference, or when you subtract them, gives you negative 7. So, so, what are these two numbers? Gives you negative 7x. What are these two numbers? So, you multiply 2 times 30, you get 60. So, the easiest way to do it, first of all, get values, get the factors of 60. So, 60, get two numbers, factors of 60 are 60, 2 here 30, 2 here 15, 3 here 5, and 5 here once. So, factors of 60 are 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So, factors of 60 can be 2 times 30 or 4 times 15 or 12 times 5 or 60 times 1. So, all these are factors of 60. So, if you get all these factors of 60, which are two numbers, if you multiply them, gives you 60. All these can give you. But if you add them, gives you 7. If you subtract them, sorry, gives you minus 7. So here if you subtract, you get something different around 28. This one gives you 11. This one gives you 7. So the two factors that we are looking for are 12 and 5. Therefore, you come here. This is just a rough draft. Therefore, you come here. 2x squared minus 7x minus 30. So the two numbers are 12 and, and 5. So, you come here, you get 2x squared plus 5x minus, 7, minus 12x minus 30. Solve this quadratically in short. So, what do we get? The common factor here in these two is x. So, x into 2x squared is 2x plus x into 5x is 5 plus, no, minus, sorry, here is minus. This is minus. What is common between 12x, 12 and 30? That is 6. So 6 goes into 12x, 2x times. Then minus, okay, you, class, you, 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 you take it with its sign. So minus 6 goes into minus 12x, 2x times. Then minus 6 goes into minus 30. Minus and minus becomes plus. Five times. So when you look at this, you find that in this bracket and this bracket, they are common. So you collect x minus 6. You take this x and minus 6. Then you take one of the common factors in the bracket here, which is that. So when you factorize this, you get this. Therefore, come back here, write it in simplified form. In simplified form, in simplified form, we had our first one as 2, the numerator into x minus 6 into x plus 6. Then the denominator is x minus 6 into 2x plus 5. This, this is this simplified. Then come here. If you divide this by this, if you want to change the division sign by multiplication, you multiply by the reciprocal of this. Now this comes up. So x minus 4 over 2x plus 5 becomes times 2x plus 5 over x minus 4. So from here, you can simplify, you can cancel. You can see x minus 6 and x minus 6, so this cancels that. Then we have 2x plus 5 
and 2x plus 5. So what do we remain with? We remain with 2 into x plus 6 over x minus 4. That's our answer. Question number 3. Question number 3. A quantity P, this is variation, a quantity P varies partly as Q. So, quantity P varies partly as Q and, and means plus, partly as the square root of Q. Partly as the square root of Q. So, quantity P varies partly as Q and partly as the square root of Q. First of all, before you proceed, you open this up. So when you open it, P, when you get rid of this sign, you, you equate it, you, you replace it with equal sign. Then you will have to introduce variables, but two variables, because they partly vary with Q and partly varies with the square root of Q. So if you say P equals to, when you replace this sign with an equal sign, then introduce a variable H, Q, Plus, you, if you introduce a variable for Q here, you introduce a variable for the square root of Q. So let's say the variable is T, the square root of Q. Once you do that, you finish this sum. So you just do the replacement. So the, what does the question say? A quantity P varies partly as Q and partly as the square root of Q. Given that P is equal to 30 when Q is equal to 9. So P is equal to 30 when Q is 9. So 9H. Just replace plus t into the square root of 9. When q is 9. And p is 14 when q is 16. So 16h plus t, the square root of 16. Then we are told, find p when q equals to 36. So find p when q equals to 36. So from here, we have two variables h and t. So we get the values of h and t, then we replace in this equation with q as 36. We'll get our value for p. So what do we do here? Very fast. This, this, we can solve this. So this is 30 equals to 9h plus the square root of 9 is 3 times t is 3t. Then this is 14 equals to 16h Plus the square root of 16 is 4 times t is 4t. So when you look at this equation, these are called simultaneous equations. So the simultaneous equation, we can solve this by either elimination or substitution method, whichever one you prefer. So we can do by substitution because you can see that in the first, in the first equation, we can divide everything by 3 here. So if you divide by 3, you get 10 equals to 3h 